So if you're looking at this, then you'll notice the art and pencils are exactly the same on both pictures. Which means that yes, Chernagast is telling the truth. However, no artists are listed, not even Chernagast. Although I think this is most likely just Ian's ego, and possibly a combination of the fact that Chernagast might not have wanted Ian to reveal his identity. And what about Cherna himself? Well, Cherna is like the anti-Ian Flynn. He's a good writer. His fanfiction actually made a whole lot of sense. It was actually a lot of fun to read compared to Ian Flynn's, which is just... I'm gonna let you read it yourself, and I'm gonna link both of them into the description below. But you could probably figure out what the story I'm gonna link you to is if you've listened to anything I've said before or watched any of my previous videos, because you're in for quite the treat. Not only that, but he is a much better artist than Ian. You look at Ian's art and you get stuff like this, whereas at Cherna you get stuff like this, and it's actually really good. And you know, I can actually see why Ian hired him to draw and pencil for Other M, because he's a very, very good artist. We know that Ian Flynn fetishizes rape, that he was hooked on with this crap from the start, that he intentionally went out of his way to get rid of the Freedom Fighters, and that he's basically the one who destroyed the last few remnants of the Sat AM continuity. Hey guys, so for this next bit, I'm actually going to give my actual voice this time around. Um, I know I've been talking about it in text so for a minute, uh, but of course I'm still on this whole Lance Jerkoff topic here. So anyways, uh, Lance Jerkoff. So like I said, uh, this dude really has a big hate for Ian Flynn. I don't even know what this guy's deal is. Um, look, that's one thing. If you don't like his stories, that's fine. I don't really care. But he just got to say X, Y, and Z about Ian Flynn and stuff. I'm like, yeah, this doesn't add up. So... Anyways, um, that's what exactly what I wanted to talk about here, so I'm going to do one by one and just debunk each one of these claims and stuff. Um, right now, I'm going to start talking about his um, the way how he reviews his videos and stuff. Uh, or not his videos, my bad. How he reviews the comics and stuff in some of his videos, um, like Spark of Life, and I'll probably pull from some examples from other uh, clips and stuff, just slowly debunking it because... Honestly, Lance Jerkoff, he doesn't um, do reviews like that anymore. He just does like maybe a little assortment every now and then. But um, still, I wanted to talk about that here because I just don't think it's legitimate. Um, and it's just too nitpicky and stuff. And honestly, I think Lance Jerkoff is probably one of the worst Sonic reviewers like in terms of like the comics and stuff that I've ever seen. The first probably being maybe Crystal Maiden or something. But uh, yeah, but Lance is definitely in, like top three for me. Uh, but yeah, so let's talk about it. And again, this is very out of character for Sally. I mean, she would, if she's a military leader, she would have to know what kind of herbs you'd have to mix in order to survive, but, and she just takes stuff out of a plant, and it gives it to this guy. I don't know why, I mean, Spongebob did it, but Spongebob's kind of an awkward person in general, 
I mean, Sally's not supposed to be an awkward person. She's supposed to be a princess who knows these things. Who has gone through military training. Who knows how to survive. And yet she doesn't even... She can't even tell the difference between a potted plant. And peanuts or something. I don't know, but... Alright, there's probably a whole lot that I can say on um, Lance Jarkov's uh, Spark of Life video that he did on his like review. But all I can say is uh, throughout the most of his video, all he does is just um, just skim through the comic uh, and whatnot versus like tell you what the entire story is about and whatnot. So you probably have to read it for yourself because, you know, it's not like reviews are supposed to be like where you tell that person what the story is about. And you're just grading it based off of like the writing, story, the characters, whatever, uh, you know. But anyways, in this scene right here, he tries to focus on like... Um, on Sally and stuff and the fact that she doesn't know how to cook and stuff and says that she's incompetent and later on tries to claim that Ian Flynn just makes Sally just dumb and incompetent and like later stuff in the Archie comics which I completely disagree with because one look the thing is this isn't something that was just first introduced by Ian Flynn the fact that Sally can't cook this is actually something that's been around since like the beginning of like the Archie comics and stuff. There's actually I'll put up like a panel right here actually, uh, if you don't believe me. And this is like way before Ian Flynn started working on the comics and stuff, right? Yeah. So, anyways, um, and on top of that, he says that Sally's a military leader, even though she's really not. I mean, yeah, she's the leader of the Freedom Fighters, but I don't think the Freedom Fighters really qualify as like military. They're not soldiers or anything. They're just a group of like rebels, uh, going up against Doctor Eggman and stuff. So. I don't know. Um, that's just my, I guess, opinion or my take. Uh, take that for whatever you will. But she's not a military leader. She doesn't know how to make rations and all that. Like, what? And she's never gone through some kind of weird military training. Now, she's gone through, of course, like, you know, formal stuff. Like, you know, diplomacy, hacking, and all that other stuff as, like, a princess. And uh, as a, like, technician and all that stuff. But that's about it. And he has to advertise the comic because he's, his, his writing is too incompetent to actually explain. Like if you explain a previous event, you have to at least say it by name and then do something to show to at least exa tell what is going on and what exactly its importance is. And this is even more retarded bullshit because Son in the Core. I, I haven't read it in enough of the comics to really know every single goddamn piece of the lore. I know at least enough about these characters, though, to know that this is not how... is that they basically turn these two into these goddamn generic lesbians. I... Rosie O'Donnell would be put to shame by these two. That's how lesbian they are. Actually, actually about that, it's magic sums it up pretty well. I hate that excuse. Even when it's accurate? Especially when it's accurate. Doctor, I want to discuss with you something. So, she knows that there's a there's magic going on, there's magic destroying the whole world, and she refuses to... No one is this stupid. I haven't seen a hardcore atheist or a fundamentalist that is this stupid. Alright, so he draws the hot side on the fact that, um, basically, the, in the text there... They try to, um, he tries to hot side on the fact that, oh, in the text, they, uh, have, uh, they're referencing events and stuff from, like, you know, the other comic, which, you know, it's always been a marketing thing, uh, for comic books and stuff. I don't see how that's a writing issue, uh, especially since this kind of dates back to, as far as I'm aware, the 60s, but it probably goes even further than that. But ever since, like, you know, like, the 60s and stuff, they always, like, reference, like, other comics and stuff in case, like, people are interested or they might want to get invested into the uh, story or the events that are unfolding in that uh, part of the story, if they at least want a little bit more context, then yeah, they can definitely check out that story in that case. Um, so I don't know why he's trying to rip on that. And then he's trying to rip on the fact that, like, Nicole is, like, you know, she doesn't like the idea of magic and stuff, or at least the concept of it uh, and whatnot. Um, I don't see how that's not her believing in magic or anything. So that's not a very incompetent thing or whatever. It's like, oh, Nicole's like, you know, because Nicole, you know, she's an AI and stuff um, and whatnot. So it's just that the idea of like, you know, magic and stuff and how that contrasts with science or how that, well, not contrast, but how that contradicts science and stuff. Yeah, Nicole's probably not a big fan of it. So, uh, and that's fair. 
okay? I don't see how that's like, oh, her, oh, she doesn't believe in magic or whatever. No, she believes it, but she just, you know, she just doesn't think it's, like, logical or she doesn't like it. Um, if you're supposed to be a, an extension of her, why, why, I don't, I don't get it. But we're going to continue. And here's the SJW cult. Because we have to make Sally the most hateable character in the franchise. Because fuck you. Also, more Sims rip off. I'm, be I'm, I'm legitimately angry at this comic. I hate this comic. I hate this whole thing. I hate you, Ian Flynn. Please go back to making hamburgers, because that's all you're good at doing. And that's generally how um, Lance Jerkoff reviews his uh, videos and stuff, or I keep saying videos. That's how he reviews his comics and stuff, uh, pretty much. Um, obviously, like I said, he just scrolled through the uh, comic and stuff. He probably read it beforehand, but he just scrolled, he just skimmed through the comic and stuff just to rant and complain about it. Uh, missing a lot of context, because if you actually look back to the scene where Sally's fussing at um, Dr. LED, you can see that, obviously, uh, that conversation is about Sally um, telling Dr. LED that Nicole is somebody worth saving when um, Dr. LED was about to give her up to uh, Phage and whatnot, and was telling Sally that she isn't real, and she's an AI, yada, 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 uh, etc. Okay, so... Anyways, to add some context, basically Phage is a virus that Dr. Eggman had created um, and whatnot. And Phage's goal was that she wanted to steal the Red Star Rings from um, Dr. Elodie, who at the time was experimenting on it, right? So basically, um, she, like Phage pretty much took Nicole hostage and wanted to get those Red Star Rings and pretty much sick like bad nicks and stuff after them so that they get, or whatever, I guess Gaia Christians, it was weird. Sick, um, yeah, I was sicking, I think, badniks after them and stuff, after, like, Tails, Big, and all of them and stuff. So they were trying to fight them off and whatnot. And um, Sally was, like, trying to enter inside, like, the, um, she pretty much takes off her jacket so that she can, like, you know, so that um, Phage, who was using, like, a surveillance camera to monitor their movements and conversation and stuff, she tosses her jacket over the surveillance camera so that she wouldn't, like, see what they're doing or what they're up to so she wouldn't make any sudden moves on Nicole as you can see, because uh, like I said, she takes Nicole hostage and whatnot, and she obviously knows that uh, Sally cares a great deal for Nicole. So if she's going to, like, you know, makes anything out, like, yeah, make any sudden movements or sudden moves or whatever on her or against her, then she can just kill Nicole and just be done with it. So anyway, Sally goes inside, tries to rescue Nicole. Dr. LED uses the Red Star Ring to try and empower Nicole turning her into overclock Nicole, and basically Nicole defeats um, Phage. So that's how the story ends there. So, yeah, Lance Jerkoff definitely missed a lot in that comic and stuff and doesn't address that here in, this, in his video. So, yeah, like I said, that's generally how he reviews his videos. Um, I might put up a few more clips and might react to some of them uh, real quick. But, yeah, um, that's just my whole thing on Lance Jerkoff. Also, if she's supposed to be a Sonic fan... Why is it that she doesn't know Sonic's position in the Resistance? Or that he doesn't have a position in the Resistance? I, I don't get this line. This line doesn't make any sense. It does not compute. Also, Blaze appears in this comic with no given explanation as to how. But the reason why, I think, would highlight that Blaze needs to be put into a loony bin. Because apparently the Soul Emeralds told her to do that. I don't even know where that power came from, but okay. I guess someone's just insane in the membrane. Now, when I first read this, I thought, why would you put Blaze in there? And, you know, I honestly would say it would have made more sense to have Blaze traveling with Sonic because of Sonic Rush, but, you know, adding a new character would be interesting, but unfortunately, we don't get that. So, anyways, right here, Lance Jerkoff tries to talk about how, um, pretty much, uh, why are they introducing, uh, Tangle here as a new character, and why do they have Blaze, an old character here, and stuff. And I think I've already mentioned this in my uh, Tangle Respect video and stuff of, like, Tangle, you know, charismatic, um, you know, how she's charismatic and all that stuff. Um, yeah, that video. But um, basically, to answer his question, pretty much IDW kind of wanted a new Sonic character and stuff. Something to, like, you know, be a new character, like, oh, introduce inside IDW and stuff, you know, a new 
uh, clean slate, a new, you know, fresh out of the water type of character, you know, something like that. So, of course, they have Tangle and stuff, you know? So, yeah, that's pretty much that. And I feel like they added in Blaze mainly because, you know, in case Tangle didn't do too well or if she wasn't received positively, then you still have Blaze to fall back on. That's kind of like, I guess, the plan right there. That's just my opinion or my take on it. But I think that's a pretty smart idea. But anyways, um, and the solar bolts and stuff, because he talks about how, oh, well, when did Blaze get this type of power or whatever? Now, first of myself, I don't know um, how the solar bolts, like works entirely because I've only played Sonic Rush. I've never played Rush uh, Adventure before. So I can't say I can like fully, yeah. But if it's like the uh, Chaos Emeralds or the Master Emerald and stuff, kind of like how knuckles is also able to communicate with the uh master mode and stuff uh specifically telling him um like where to go where other pieces are at or like other fragments and stuff like that um blaze also has like a psychic connection to the soul emeralds and stuff being the guardian and stuff so she gets premonitions and stuff hell even the um later one comic she actually helped uh get sonic's memory back when he had amnesia temporarily so yeah um some pretty powerful stuff right there so anyways that's just to answer his question what are my other thoughts on this comic well tangle didn't need to be here I, I still stand by that duke nukem would have been much more fun tangle isn't a very interesting character in certain parts she acts like amy in other parts she acts like sally because for the first half it seems like they're actually going to make her a amy clone and then she takes a U-turn and kind of turns into Sally a little bit. It doesn't really make her an interesting character at all. And I think she might also be a lesbian. There's just not a whole lot going for her. And if they have to make her a lesbian to make her interesting, fuck that. They tried it once. It destroyed two characters. Don't do that again. Alright, so throughout most of his video, or at least a portion of his video, he kind of craps on Amy a lot uh, and stuff and says that she's boring and she's uninteresting after Sonic 06 and whatnot, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, of course, you know, Amy's one of my favorite characters and stuff. He says it's out of nowhere that she's a leader if I already debunked this before in one of my other previous videos. Um, I'm not going to really talk much about Amy here, but what I am going to talk about is he kind of says Tangle is a lot more like Amy and at times a lot more like Sally which makes no sense I don't know why people even say that Tangle is even like Sally in the first place which don't get me wrong I like Sally but Tangle and Sally have almost nothing in common I mean their hairstyles are a little similar sure um some people were kind of mistaking uh Tangle's silhouette for Sally's which I was like nah that's a whole nother character right there but um yeah 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 so Tangle yeah Tangle acts nothing like neither Amy or uh Sally and whatnot I mean, yeah, besides being friends of Sonic and whatnot, and also being a girl or whatever, uh, that's probably the most, the only things I could probably say they have in common. Like, I would say, like, at least when it comes to Amy uh, and stuff, I would say, like, Amy is just a lot more feminine, and she's a lot more, like, I guess, grounded more so than Tangle. Like, she'll be more comfortable, like, she'll, there are times where Amy will rather, like, just be at home and rather, like, chill and stuff, and I would say, like, Tangle... She likes to go on, like, endless adventures and stuff. I would say she's a lot more like Sonic in that regard. And Sally, Sally is also, like, I guess, I wouldn't say she's adventurous. Like, Sally's also somewhat kind of grounded, too. But she's mostly a more, like, she's kind of, like, you know, a lot more serious compared to, like, Tangle and stuff where uh, she wouldn't mess around or she doesn't, like, you know, to enjoy. I wouldn't say she doesn't. Well, yeah, she wouldn't really enjoy, like, fighting and stuff too much. Uh, but she's fighting on behalf of her people. So I don't see how any of that is similar to uh, Tangle's character at all. So I don't know. Lance is probably pulling this off the internet or what. I don't know. But Tangle's personality doesn't resemble neither Amy's or uh, Sally. And on top of that, Tangle is even a fangirl of Sonic. Um, Tangle, well, I guess she is somewhat of a fan. But I wouldn't say like, well, okay, my bad. Um, I wouldn't say she's like, you know, like a diehard fan. Like, of course, she should be aware of who Sonic is. Like, I mean, the whole world should inside Sonic's world because uh, he saved the world like plenty of times, like in um, Sonic Adventures uh, 1 and in Sonic Adventures 2 and stuff. So, of course, he's a known character and stuff, you know, kind of like, I wouldn't say a celebrity, but he's kind of, you know, famous and whatnot for that. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, I think Tangle in a way, of course, she admires Sonic and stuff. Hell, 
she was actually inspired um, to, you know, just journey from her own town and, like, adventure and stuff, pretty much, uh, just like Sonic. And also, he kind of says that um, in one part that uh, why does this place, like, take place and, like, oh, why is Tangle randomly here and stuff? Or shouldn't she know his position in the Resistance or whatever? Honestly, I don't know about that. I mean, it's not like Tangle because she wasn't a part of the Resistance, so it's not like she should know. Especially since, again, she's not, like, a diehard fan like that or anything. She just knows Sonic and thinks he's cool. I guess that's it. And um, her being inside the village and stuff, you, I'm like, he does realize that's actually her village, right? That's not just a village that she just randomly just came across and decided, oh, yeah, I'm going to use my powers to help out everybody. No, that's actually her hometown and whatnot that they're fighting in. That's, yeah... So, I'm, I'm like I said, he doesn't read these things thoroughly and stuff. He doesn't do his complete research. Me, I mean, again, I'm doing this video not like I just freshly just read the comics and stuff uh, just now. Um, but I'm just saying, like, I at least remember these things at least. Like, it's not, it's not that hard.